Well, a watershed starts with uh, small streams. Then that small tributary would flow into a secondary stream, and they get larger and larger, and eventually... Around this larger river, there's a large basin. It all goes downstream. You know, that's where that bumper sticker comes from. We all live downstream. So the Raccoon Creek watershed encompasses all of the creeks and streams and drainages in the surrounding land that feed into Raccoon Creek. Everything that you do affects the water in your watershed. That's a hard concept to see because you don't see it happening unless you're the one out there doing the monitoring, doing the sampling. Knowing what a watershed is and how we each affect the watershed is not something that people really understand. And um, that's something I hope we can fix. Back in the 80s, people who lived in the Raccoon Creek watershed saw the need for improvements in the watershed. Coal mining was huge in Ohio in 1800s and 1900s, and there were no regulations. They could come get their coal and leave, and leave the mines exactly how they were when they left them. And they look awful, but the water quality is a main issue. When the water and air mixes with the leftover coal, it's really high in sulfur, and that combines to create acid mine drainage, which kills the fish, kills the bugs. As you know, the cultural history here, there's been a lot of uh, abuse of the land, you know, just taking, 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 and, and then once they took everything, they left. And so that, of course, took the toll on the wildlife and on the environment. Raccoon Creek is a huge watershed. It's almost 700 square miles, it flows through six counties. One group cannot fix the entire problem with the acid mine drainage. So the partnership came together, ODNR, EPA, different schools, OU, Hawking College, Ohio State even has had a part to it. And all these organizations have come together to help solve the mine drainage problems and put projects in in Raccoon Creek. The Raccoon Creek Partnership is trying to educate people on the stewardship and conservation of the watershed to protect it, to conserve it, to make sure that the problems that happened in the past, such as the mine drainage, aren't going to happen in the future. You guys not taking off, are you? Not yet. Good. What they're trying to tell the other male deer is what? Back off. Get away! Get out of my territory. Beware. This is my territory. Mika is working with the Education Center. She actually started the Waterloo Education Center. They accepted the role that I brought into the group as, you know, wanting to uh, start camps here, science camps for children, bringing people out into nature. Because we thought it would be a really fun way to incorporate using wildflowers and furthering the message of conservation and reusing and recycling and all those fun things. Well, I made one secret in from this and, um, it, and I would probably use that as a bookmark. Are you having more fun than the kids? I'm having a lot of fun. I am having a lot of fun. Is this how it usually goes? <laughs> yes, typically. <laughs> we, en we enjoy our time at camp. Mostly our main goal is to get the children outside and just explore and have fun and not have that adult constantly telling them what to do. Because children are connected to nature naturally. That's my belief. And once that spark comes up inside of them, there's no stopping them. They have an innate knowledge of how to behave in nature but we are there to facilitate that. So when they come out to Waterloo, we play games, we do crafts, we uh, talk about the watershed, we do lots of different things to try to keep everybody interested. Molly Gurian, she's also a board member on the Raccoon Creek Partnership, and she's the chair of the Raccoon Creek Water Trail Association. We are working on the Raccoon Creek Water Trail designation, and because the RCP, the Raccoon Creek Partnership, has done such a great job in cleaning up the Raccoon Creek, wildlife has returned, fish has returned, water quality has improved, and so we want to promote the recreational aspects of the water trail. It's beautiful hemlock forests and rock outcrops and lots of wildlife. 
We have public canoe floats every spring and usually one or two throughout the summer or fall. Raccoon Creek is 75% wooded, so it's a beautiful watershed to explore. Really, the goal is to hopefully connect people to our local watersheds because we have such extreme watershed issues and that's what RCP is all about, is cleaning up our streams. Raccoon Creek and all of its partners, state, federal, local, have put in 10 completed acid mine drainage projects and we have two that will be completed this coming spring and seven projects that are going in in the next couple years. The Pierce Run project is currently in construction. It'll consist of a steel slag leach bed. The goal is to treat the Orton underground mine seep upstream of where the project is going in. So the project is designed to reduce the acidity and metals flowing into Raccoon Creek from Pierce Run. In the case of the doser out at Carbondale, there's an underground mine behind the doser that discharges acid mine drainage 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, into Hewitt Fork. And that doser is run completely by the mine. The acid mine drainage is piped into the doser, which turns a water wheel, which turns an auger that cranks out the limestone to treat the acid mine drainage. Hewitt Fork was basically dead in 2003 before the doser was installed. In 2008 when we did our biological sampling at the mouth of Hewitt Fork there were 18 species of fish there. So it has been a successful project. In the 80s the EPA wrote Raccoon Creek off as unrecoverable. We weren't even going to deal with it and today we have fish in the entire main stem of Raccoon Creek which is very exciting. <laughs> We would love to get more people involved just spreading the word about Raccoon Creek, about why they should protect the watershed, about what's going on with the acid mine drainage, how they can affect the watershed. I really would like for people to reach out a little bit and understand what we consider a community. You know, when we talk about community, we often just talk about the people involved. And I hope that through projects like Raccoon Creek Partnership, we're expanding that word community into the community of the animals and the forest and the watershed because those are all components we need to make a healthy community. And I really hope that we are able to start here, make, make it good, and expand from there. <laughs>